Now the foe were upon them, wicked swords glittering in the moonlight. Like a goblin it looked, but with straighter limbs and a greater bulk and weight. Man-sized. Still, it was sword of skin and yellow-eyed, with ears flaring outward like bat wings. And the orcs are skilled with weaponry, unlike the smaller goblins who depended on sheer numbers to overwhelm a foe. And this ogre sought to skewer Ellen upon his long, curved blade. Darting, the warrior maid kept the horse between her and the foe, fainting first this way and that, as wind snorted blood scents and jigged and sidestepped, straining back, prancing in fear at the end of the tether. The ogre ducking and bobbing on the opposite side of the mirror, catching glimpses of his quarry through the gray's dancing legs, seeking a way to get at the woman. And Ellen could not get to her sword, for it was on the other side with the ogre, and a sword in skilled hands could easily beat a dagger, if she threw it and missed. Suddenly the warrior maid lunged for the tether and grasped it in her her sharp blade slashing through the line, cutting the wrenching mare free as the orc leapt forward, sword whistling, hackling downward. Desperately, Ellen drove aside, hitting the ground hard and rolling and crying out, Vataku! Vadoda! Snarling, the, gob the ogre sprang forward, his curved blade raised for the final blow, and died as Wim's flailing hooves crushed the back of his skull, the mare trampling upon his smashed-down corpse. The Grey, obeying the warrior, made and shouted battle commands. Attack, wind, kill! At Ellen's sharp whistle, wind stopped plunging, stopped rearing up, and smashing down on the dead enemy. Stopped her lunging and stood, the whites of her eyes showing, nostrils flaring and snorting, legs trembling, but still she stood. The princess leapt aside, pulling the spear from the straps, intent upon lancing the orcs from her horseback. But she neaten and bothered. For when she looked up, she saw that the dwarf came running, bloody axe in hand, ready to be of aid if need be. His two orcs lay dead in the ever widening pools of dark blood. Gazing up at the warrior woman in the moonlight, he spoke. You fight well, Ryder, he grasped grudgingly. And you too, dwarf, she replied. Perhaps, perhaps. The same thought crossed both their minds. Suddenly, Ellen shivered. Someone just stepped on my grave, she thought. The saying came unbidden to her consciousness, but she knew that tremble had instead come from the feeling that an unseen malevolence watched. Look, dwarf, you said it yourself. Evil comes afoot in the dark. Two nights now we've been attacked. Perhaps we should ride a ways together. Look yourself, woman, growled the dwarf. You are a rider. I can never be your comrade. Ugh, Ellen spat. Forget it, dwarf. I should have... Hold, the dwarf shouted her down. Fool woman, listen before you caterwaul. I deem we must ride some distance together. I would fain have it elsewise, but I keen something evil is afoot, and we have much little choice. Much as I mislike it, this truce between us must stand for another night. Even so, do not make the mistake of thinking me as a comrade, for that I will never be. Comrade? I? I think of you as a comrade? Ellen's voice rose in incredulous disbelief. Then she flared. One more night, dwarf, that's all. Angrily, Ellen dismounted and began jamming items into her saddlebags. Another thing, dwarf, don't call me fool woman ever again. I am a warrior maiden. I am Ellen. As they glared at one another, the belligerent silence between them stretched to be broken at last by... And this jackass is named Thork, gritted the dwarf. And so, bristling with hostility, Ellen and Thork gathered up their belongings and quenched the fire, and without a backwards glance at the slain orcs, they set forth once more in an easterly direction, two mismatched silhouettes riding into the rising moon.